Now in a previous video, I showed you how to create drum samples out of loops by using Resample-Matic 5000, which is the sampler that comes with Reaper. We created one for kick, snare, clap, hi-hat, and an open hat. And it sounded like this. Using MIDI that we programmed that looks like this. But in this video, I want to show you how to create multiple outputs for those samples so you can process them separately, giving us much more control over volume and other effects. Let's go back to our samples. And the way to do this is to create multiple channels on this track. Now we could put these plugins on separate tracks, but then we wouldn't have MIDI all on one track which is what I prefer to do, at least for drums. So I prefer to set up multiple channels on this track and send it to other tracks for processing. And we can do that by making this track a multi-channel track. Right now, if we go to the routing, we can see it's just two channels on this track. But we could change that right from these plugins. If we go to the pin connector on the kick sampler, right over here, we could see there's just two channels. We could change that to be any amount of channels we want. But for us, let's use one and two for the kick, so it's stereo. You could do mono if you want, three and four for the snare, five and six for the clap, and seven and eight for both of the hi-hat samples, as we don't need those separated. Of course, you could if you want. So they'll share those outputs. So go back to the kick, go to the pin, set it to eight channels, and leave it set to one and two for our kick. And then for the snare, we'll change it by clearing it to be three and four. Do the same for the clap, reset it, and we'll change it to be five and six. And then finally, the hi-hats, we'll make them seven and eight for both. So again, they're going to share seven and eight. So we'll process them together. So if we play our track, we still hear the kick coming through this track, and we don't want that. So if we go to the routing, just take it out of the master parent send. And now we're not going to hear our kick or any of these samples from this track. Although we still see them on our meters. So I don't need to send them to other tracks. So let's create some new tracks. We'll make four and name them kick, snare, clap, and hi-hat. And now we'll send audio from a drum track to these tracks. Let's select all these, hold on the shift key, drag the routing, and drop it on these tracks. And that creates multiple sends from our drum track to all of these tracks kick, snare, clap, and hi-hat. But it's sending the audio from one and two to one and two. That's okay for the kick, but for the snare, it needs to be three and four. For the clap, it needs to be five and six. And for the hi-hats, it needs to be seven and eight. How we separated before in the effects plugins. So now, it should be separated and sent to these tracks. Notice it sounds the same. We could solo the kick. And we're just getting the kick. Or the snare. Or the clap. Or the hi hat. But now we could process these sounds completely separately. Like for the kick, notice I'm hearing a bit of shaker in the kick. Because it came from a loop with a shaker in it. We can filter that out a bit by using an EQ. And it's not going to affect the other tracks. Our snare, clap, and hi hats, it's just going to affect the kick. So we add an EQ just for the kick. Let's change this to a low pass and filter out the top end.
maybe boost to the low end. That sounds better. Maybe for the hi-hat, we want to brighten it up. Let's say an EQ to the hi-hat. Maybe for the clap, we want to add a delay. Set so a delay plugin to this. I like to use the ping pong delay. Make it faster. Maybe we want to put it every other hit. We could automate it by changing the automation mode to right and just automate the bypass. Now it works on every other hit. Put it back to trim read. But more importantly, now we can mix it with our mixer right in here. But first, I like to separate these tracks for the track control panel and the mixer, which we could do by going to the view menu and going to the track manager. Then we can change our drums to just be in the track control panel, as we don't need to see it in the mixer, as we're not going to mix the volume using this track. We're just going to use it for MIDI. In fact, let's rename it MIDI. Then the individual tracks will take them out of the track control panel, so they just show up in the mixer. As we don't need to see them in here. We just need to see this track, where we could edit our MIDI, if we want to mix our drums, we could do that for the mixer. And we're just going to see the individual drum tracks in here, along with the loop. We're not going to see the MIDI track. So we can remix it from here. So we're done mixing, just close this. We're back to working in here. We want to edit our drums, open up the MIDI editor, and close it when we're done. We want to mix our drums again, open up the mixer. So we're just seeing the info we need to see at that moment, which we can do by separating the outputs of each one of our samples in here. So now they're coming from each separate track, our kick, snare, clap, and hi-hats. So that's pretty much it. That's creating multiple outputs for samples in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo boys, let's go. Oh!